guys, welcome back. So last week we talked about the top 10 book cliches, but you know, movies have a lot of cliches as well. Yeah, we may be homeschooled, but we do watch movies too. So number one, it doesn't always happen at the beginning of the movie, but a lot of times it's like in the opening scene where the main character will set off an explosion behind him and he won't even look back because that proves just how cool he is. Number two is that the main character, who's a girl, is just kind of plain at the beginning. Nobody really likes her. She doesn't have any friends. And then she usually like just takes her glasses off and she's instantly gorgeous and everybody loves her. Ugh, you're so weird. What's your problem? You know what? You could be so gorgeous. Can I give you a makeover? Oh, sure. You can't hurt. I feel so amazing. Okay, so number three is when the bad guys are like really slow or have terrible aim or they're just like really incompetent when they're up against the heroes and it's like, now they're so bad, really? is when the group of heroes is completely dysfunctional and like losing all the battles and stuff and then there comes this moment of truth when they realize they need to work together and boom they defeat the bad guys. parent has to take care of this like bratty kid and at first they hate each other and they're just not having it and then like three weeks later they're best friends and then they find out that they're related actually look honey can you not do that anymore it's really getting old oh my god i don't even know how i have to live with you you're not even my parent and you're so old-fashioned oh my gosh you better show some more appreciation to a person who has basically just opened up their home to you. Wow, thank you so much for rescuing me from those bullies. I don't know what I would do without you. Yes, I, that's what mothers do. As you see, I am your long lost parent. And then number six, it usually occurs at the beginning of the movie when you hear the main character just like, talking about life, like usually it's backstory, and you just see, maybe you see the view of the city, or maybe the person's just sitting down reading, and they're just like, so this is basically the story of my life. We're all a little bit different. Some of us show our feelings differently than others. For me, I've never been one to put my emotions on display. So when Gary broke my heart that summer, I knew it was going to be a rough school year because undoubtedly I would see him in the hallways every day. And number seven is when the movie begins with someone like a grandfather or grandmother a lot of times reading a kid a book. And that's how they establish the plot, apparently. On a cliff near the water stood a proud stallion, strong and majestic. Their woods were men hunted animals. He loved water. Soon men came out of the woods with loud voices like swords. They're going to try to catch the stallion. the antagonist or the protagonist or occasionally both are dead but then it turns out that hey they're actually not dead they're alive yes i have killed the mighty dumb face now all the loser relatives live happily ever after this just in Apparently, Dumbface was spotted just outside of Loserville when Rachel had supposedly killed him stabbing him seven times in the chest and shoving him off a cliff the residents of Loserville report to being disheartened at this turn of events. 
And then number nine is when your underdog basically becomes a hero. So if they're bullied in school or they're just kind of a nobody and then suddenly they do something heroic and everybody's like, oh my gosh, remember that such and such? Oh my gosh, they're amazing now. Oh my gosh, you are such a weirdo. Do oh my it. gosh, she's so ugly. Ugh. like a flash forward like four years in the future when everyone is living happily ever after except you're like but they're all old now i saw a lizard today in the backyard boy it sure brought back memories of the time that we attacked and killed that scaly vicious beast on top of the empire state building he was threatening to kill new york city and destroy the world yeah we was like we was like super heroes back in those days, Grandma. Doesn't that make you want to go and do it again? Just get up from these rocking chairs and look, there's a beast out there now. I bet we could get it. Come on, let's go. Hey guys, welcome back. So last week we talked about the te top tat mm -hmm. explosion behind him. Just no, oh, dang. It doesn't always happen yet. <laughs> I can't like it today. <laughs> You're not behaviors today. Everybody is so sad if it's a protagonist, and then if it turns out that they're not dead. <laughs> that didn't work. Girl, you're still failing. Oh, shit. <laughs> 